So I'm just going to talk a little bit about why you would choose to publish OER, um, because you've already hopefully covered some of the reasons why you'd use OER, but we're hoping to talk about the, some of the reasons that this would benefit you also and um, your practice as an instructor. You automatically own the copyright to any of the work that you produce, the moment that you produce it. You don't have to go to the copyright office and submit any paperwork. Anything you produce as an author, as a creator, anything, you own the rights to that. So that means you own the rights to selling it, you own the rights to distributing it, that's all on you. When you put a Creative Commons license onto your work, um, you still own the copyright and the intellectual property, but you're just preemptively telling other people how they can use your work. So it's sort of like if someone asked you if they could use your PowerPoint for their class, maybe your lecture notes, and you say sure and you share it with them, um, this is just a way for you to be able to share your work without anyone having to ask you first. So it's a really nice way to benefit others, and there are, are some benefits to you in that as well. Now, of course, there are going to be concerns uh, that we've heard from faculty about giving away your work. So some of those concerns might be that you maybe want to publish a book. Maybe you want to sell your slides for a class. Maybe you want to sell your entire course online. So you might be concerned about some loss of commercial gain. Publishing is one we hear most, especially here at Cal State Fullerton. You might also be concerned that others will exploit your work if you make it available online with a Creative Commons license. You might be worried someone else might sell it, claim it as their own, or someone else might plagiarize it. And these are really understandable concerns, and if you have those concerns, you're certainly not alone. But I'd like to ask if maybe those concerns are masking something else altogether. Because opening your work to your peers for scrutiny is very anxiety producing. Um, I'm an e-learning developer, I'm an instructional designer, in addition to being a librarian, and I produce a lot of work, and I put Creative Commons licenses on my work, including this presentation as well. And it can be really anxiety-producing for me to open up everything I have to someone else, and I get lots of feedback back, some of it I want, some of it I don't, but um, in, in the end, it, it, it does benefit me to, um, to get that kind of feedback, because opening your work ends up improving your work, just like opening my work improves my work. Um, just like when you publish in a peer review journal, I think part of being a scholar, of being in higher education, is a culture of opening your work to others so they can get the best feedback back. So you can reincorporate that into your practice as an instructor, as a scholar. Just like when you publish in a peer reviewed journal, you put your best foot forward, you send out the best possible draft that you can. And then it's sent out to peer reviewers. You get really in-depth feedback from them. Sometimes you agree with it. Sometimes you don't agree with it so much. But the point of the process is that when your work is finally published, you get a lot of really good feedback along the way, and your final draft is the best draft it could possibly be. Similarly, there are learning object repositories like Merlot and OER Commons. Those are two of my favorite. They both have built-in rating and comment systems. So if you were to publish your PowerPoint, your tutorials, your worksheets, whatever you have to one of these learning object repositories for others to use, you'd be putting into the, the record what Creative Commons license uh, you're licensing it with. Um, so others would know what they could do with your work, but then they're also going to kind of give back by rating your work and by leaving comments. And this can be, a really interesting way to improve your materials because first off you're putting your best draft in the learning object repository if you choose to share and others are using your work in their own work and you might be really interested to see what kind of interesting new things to do with your work or maybe they'll have a different perspective that you didn't have and they'll leave that as a comment so that you can improve your own materials for your own courses. Sometimes teaching can be kind of a an isolated activity. You get your SOQs at the end of the year, but I mean your students are not instructors. It can give you feedback, but it can be really powerful to have someone that's your peer in your field giving you some in-depth uh, feedback on the work that you've shared out on the on the web. So to get back to addressing potential loss of commercial gain. First bullet is kind of a bummer. But the economic value of materials is usually not that high, especially because 
colleges and universities across the U.S. are teaching the same basic general education courses. So especially if you teach in general education, there's thousands of people that are teaching the same thing as you and producing the same sorts of materials. And additionally, there's some major content producers like Pearson or Macmillan that have universities locked in to having students purchase the codes to access the supplemental materials beyond the textbooks. So if you're teaching a general ed course, you're probably not going to make a whole lot of money off your materials anyways. Of course, if you release them, you still retain a copyright member. If you do have some really specialized work, like something for maybe an uh, um, upper division course or a graduate course or some really interesting groundbreaking research, your work, of course, is more likely to be economically valuable. I'm not saying your work isn't valuable. I'm just saying that economically, it doesn't always uh, pan out for you to, to publish some of your, your work. I also want to stress that if your work has value, probably shouldn't release it on the web in the first place. Uh, some, some of your work, your PowerPoint slides, again, your worksheets, whatever, you're posting to Titanium or to any learning management system. Already you're kind of losing control of it because once it's in a digital form, it's downloadable, someone else can take it and put it onto the web and share it with others and other courses. You never know what might turn up. So I'd like to argue that if you do attach an open license to your work preemptively, even if you're not sure whether or not you want to lease it through a learning object repository, you can actually help reduce exploitation of your own work. And the way that works is that if you take like a worksheet, for example, or your PowerPoint slides, you make sure they're labeled with your Creative Commons license, that you are thinking about um, maybe widely releasing it, or if you just preemptively attach a Creative Commons license, you choose one, you put it onto your work. Again, you don't have to register that Creative Commons license with anyone either. It's just a way for you to make a little official note on your work, telling other people it's okay how to use it. And if you additionally put your own contact information, your name, your position, your email address, whatever, attaching that open license is actually going to increase the chances of you getting attributed. So even if you aren't releasing your work in a wide network on a learning object repository, just releasing your work on the web in general, or even sharing with your colleagues, there are chances it could go off into places that you didn't authorize yourself, and there could be accidental plagiarism from others. So this also makes it easier for plagiarism to be discovered. So if you were thinking about releasing your work commercially, getting it published as a textbook, or selling it in some other way, it's easier for you to prove that you own the copyright because you released it first onto the web with the Creative Commons license, with your name attached to it. And if anyone else tries to sell or claim your work as their own, because your work is already out there, it's easier for it to be discovered if someone is trying to exploit your work. It's kind of a similar concept with Turnitin. It's just a database of papers that students' papers are checked against. So if you release your own work on the web, it's easier for others to check and see who this work already belongs to. And I also just want to mention that if you choose to release your work on an open platform, whether as an open educational resource or something open access, it's not like you're going to be replaced as an instructor because your value as an instructor is not in your textbook or course materials. It's not like Cal State Fullerton or another university is going to say, hey, we've got your textbook, we have your slides, we have your course, we don't need you anymore. That's definitely not the case because the value of your work as an instructor really comes from your ability to create an effective learning experience for your students. You're a subject matter expert, you have a lot of teaching experience, and your ability to actually guide students through the material to help them reach those aha moments, that's the real value of your work as an instructor. It's an offering effective support to students, so that's whether doing career counseling, if they come by your office hours and you're able to support them one-on-one. -on -one. There's a few different ways that you're offering support to your students. They're, you're doing them a great service. And finally, this, this is where I argue that the, the, real, the real aha moments happen for students is when you provide intelligent assessment of your students' work and critical feedback. So that's the moment where students are wrestling with the concept, they're not sure if they have it, and you sit down with them, you give them feedback, whether it's on an essay or in person, and you help them reach that, that moment of critical understanding. So, if you do choose to release your work online so that others can use it, whoever uses it, they're not, getting, they're not getting you. They're not getting your amazing abilities. They're just getting your materials. 
And there's a few additional benefits of publishing open educational resources. One is that it helps you build your reputation in your field. So if you're getting started in your career or maybe you're looking to expand your network of people across your field, it's a way for you to get your name out there, to put your materials in learning object repositories, to share your materials so others will start to know who you are. It's kind of a fun one. If you do uh, share your materials with others, it gives you a lot of opportunities for collaboration. So the people that are going to use your materials are the same ones teaching in the same field. So you can, might meet some really interesting colleagues that you never would have met otherwise. And you also might have some interesting opportunities to develop all new materials, to actually write that textbook down the line to do some other really interesting things. Again, if you release your work as a OER, it will help you improve your teaching because, again, you're going to put your best draft out there possible in the first place, and others are going to reuse your work in interesting ways and give you feedback on maybe ways you can improve your materials. So that's an interesting thing as well. And no matter what you do, you are going to retain copyright and intellectual property rights to your work. No matter what license you put on, or whether you don't put on a license at all, you always retain copyright and intellectual property to your work and the right to sell your work. So our bargaining um, union, the CFA, actually has a clause also in our contract um, that mandates that you retain intellectual property rights. Now, if you create something while you're at Cal State Fullerton and you leave Cal State Fullerton, Cal State Fullerton may still use that item after you leave, but as faculty under the CFA graph bargaining agreement, you do retain right to copyright and intellectual property for your work as well. So you have the right to put a Creative Commons license on your work and you have the right to profit from it as well. <laughs>